Coming up next on This Week in Torrance, local firefighters roll up their sleeves to help make one child's wish come true. And bikers rode through Torrance in an effort to help a local school. We'll tell you why. Are you planning on fumigating your home anytime soon? Then you'll want to hear what Torrance police are saying about the recent string of robberies. Plus, this young man has lived quite the life in all of his nine years. We'll tell you why so many came out in support of him and his cause. These stories and much more just seconds away. Your local news starts right now. Hello everyone and welcome to This Week in Torrance. I'm Ben McCain. And I'm Jen Chun. Thanks for joining us. Here are your top stories. Torrance made headlines in the business community recently. The city was named one of three South Bay cities among 11 as finalist by a county economic development group for its Most ben Business Friendly City Award. Torrance and Carson were nominated for a second consecutive year among cities with a population greater than 60,000, while the neighboring city of Gardena was named in the category for cities with a population of fewer than 60,000. The Los Angeles County Economic Development Corporation introduced the awards in 2006 to recognize communities with business-friendly programs and services. This year's award winners will be announced November 3rd. October kicks off National Breast Cancer Awareness Month and a local business is getting in the spirit of pink. King's Hawaiian, a family-owned company known for its sweet bread, has partnered with Susan G. Komen for the cure. And in support of the cause, its iconic orange bread packaging will be pink for the month of October. King's Hawaiian will also donate $150,000 to Susan G. Komen for the cure. King's Hawaiian Bakery and Restaurant has been offering authentic Hawaiian food and traditional favorites to the Torrance community since 1988. Adding to the diverse mix of businesses in downtown Torrance, one more will soon be opening its doors. The Planning Commission recently approved plans for Frankie, Johnny and Luigi's Pizza Parlor to open at 1437 Marcelina Avenue. The 1,300 square foot restaurant plans to sell thin crust New York style pizzas, Coney Island hot dogs and Italian uh, entrees, said owner Gary Zimmerman. Zimmerman also owns Old Torrance Coffee and Tea and the World War II store located on the same street. This will be one of several restaurants to open in the historic downtown area just within the last year. Well, more good news for downtown shoppers. Despite disappointing turnouts, Old Torrance's Farmer's Market is still slated to return again next year but with some possible changes. The downtown Farmer's Market, which opened in March this year, is held every Thursday evening from 4 to 8 p.m. near El Prado Avenue. While they will close after October 6 for the rest of the season, the market is scheduled to reopen after the new year. The market started with about 15 farmers offering the freshest produce and now only half remain. And while local business owners in the area agree the new Farmer's Market has been a great benefit to their business with increased foot traffic, it's unclear why the market hasn't been more successful. According to the city's redevelopment agency, possible changes to the Thursday market could include starting and ending an hour earlier, changing locations, expanding the market, marketing program, or even offering other attractions including arts and crafts vendors. Proposed changes will be reviewed after the new year. The Torrance Salvation Army chapter held its 19th annual health fair recently. Jacqueline Quinn reports with more on what the event had to offer. The fair was held at the Army's Community Center and featured nearly 50 booths offering free services and consultations. A director with the event says it's a good opportunity to get information on how to stay healthy. There's, there's options, there's all kinds of, um, you know, just to have some screening so to, for them to be able to, to find out things about yourself, to learn, so that they're able to, to grow I mean, and live a better life. Navarro says some of the services could be life-saving in the future. That's why he hopes people don't go alone. Uh, today is uh, geared towards the, the seniors and uh, the older adult in our uh, community, but it's really geared to, to the family. Some of the services offered for free included blood pressure screening, oral cancer screening, and even testing for plaque buildup in arteries. Those platelets will actually stick against the walls of the artery, creating plaque buildup. So, your arteries have been very good, very clear. The event was put together in partnership with the City of Torrance and is expected to come back next year. For City Cable 3, I'm Jacqueline Quinn. 
Thanks, Jacqueline. The, the Salvation Army is located at 4223 Emerald Street in Torrance. Up next, fundraising efforts in the name of cancer. We'll tell you how this nine-year-old is inspiring so many. And we'll tell you why Torrance firefighters are rolling up their sleeves to serve ice cream. Did you know early signs of eye disease and vision changes start to occur around age 40? I'm Dr. Ann Coleman for the American Academy of Ophthalmology. I see firsthand how vision problems can affect lives. We are urging adults to get a baseline eye disease screening at age 40. If you have any risk factors or signs of eye disease, see an ophthalmologist right away. Know your risks. Save your sight. To learn more, visit GetEyeSmart.org. When a disaster strikes, time is a killer. The hours following are critical. The UN Central Emergency Response Fund jumpstarts relief efforts which saves lives. Help us help in time. Donate now at rapiddisasterrelief.org. Motorcyclists trying to make some noise for charity took part in the first ever Schweitzer Learning Center motorcycle run. Jacqueline Quinn reports with more. The run began in Harbor City with two other checkpoints before looping back. Participants picked out cards along the way to draw the best poker hand. So you're a six of hearts? And it wasn't ideal weather for a bike ride, but a few dozen signed up for the run anyway to help raise money for the center. This rider says he's cold and wet but felt inspired to join. You know, I kind of figured, like, hey, you know, if I could help out my little niece, why not help anybody else, you know? The Schweitzer Learning Center says it's had to step up its fundraising efforts in light of the recent educational funding cutbacks. That's why some say today's event is important giving students a better hand. Because of all the cuts in education over the last three or four years, nonprofit schools such as ours are really suffering. And for small nonprofit schools like this one here, which has to self fund at least 25% of its budget aside from the state aid, donations and fundraisers have become even more crucial support education, support investing in our youth, and especially support investing in kids with really exceptional needs. And Dr. Fu says education makes a huge impact in the lives of the center's students. We have children who are kind of the outliers of the outliers. Our children are kids who can't be successful in a regular public school environment. They have severe learning behavior or emotional problems. The program has had great successes over the years, but for many, this is the last place they can turn to for an education. They say things like, if it wasn't for you, I'd be dead or in jail. Tom DeGrasse, a volunteer at the event, says he's glad he could help. They do work that a lot of people really kind of shy away from. Maybe they just don't want to face the fact that there are people like this, and uh, they could use our support. Of course, the big draw of this event were the cars and motorcycles. I really love motorcycles and Harleys just like make my heart race. Safe riding, I guess. <laughs> Have fun. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Jacqueline Quinn. Thank you, Jacqueline. To learn more about the nonprofit school, go to SchweitzerCenter.org. Supporters came out in droves wearing gold in honor of Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. Hida Samad tells us more. Every step taken today is for childhood cancer, and in particular for one nine-year-old cancer survivor. Not many kids have endured the trials that Cody Esporst has. He's been a warrior since he was born with a very rare syndrome called Banyan Riley Ruvalkem that's caused him to go through many procedures to remove hundreds of polyps, otherwise known as growths, that spread throughout his intestines and rectum. Not only that, but he has also battled thyroid cancer. But even with these health barriers, his family has made it a mission to make people realize that childhood cancer is reality. We want to get it out there. We want people to know that it does exist. 
and that it's, uh, you know, it doesn't affect as many, uh, as many kids as breast cancer affects women or whatnot, but that it is out there and it's, and it's real. While Cody is cancer-free, his parents are worried about what the future can bring with this syndrome. Their juvenile polyps uh, now, uh, our fear is as he grows older, uh, you know, becomes a teenager and, and grows into adulthood, that those will become, uh, become cancerous. So, uh, wife and I are very passionate about this and uh, we thought we'd start this year and take our first step in trying to bring awareness and, and raise some money for, for that. That's why the community gathered today to support the first annual Cody S. Porst Walk for Childhood Cancer at Torrance American Baseball Field, an opportunity to raise awareness and funding for not only Cody, but American Childhood Cancer organizations. Judith Updahl from Cancer Community in Redondo Beach hopes they will be able to provide services to everyone. It can be really tough and it can feel very isolating uh, at times. So to provide services for all ages of cancer patients is absolutely our goal and I don't think I've said yet that everything that we do is completely free of charge. Leading the walk around the field with a big smile, you would never think this was a boy who receives constant blood transfusions and has even had cancer. I asked him what his unique shirt that said cancer survivor meant to him. It means a lot to me. It also meant a lot that friends, family and other kid cancer survivors walked in honor of Cody and say he's been an encouragement to everyone around him. I've coached these boys for so many years and all the older boys really just look to Cody as an inspiration even though he's younger. You know, he gives them something to smile about, something to go forward for and to, you know, not complain about when things are bad for them. He inspires me to do everything I can. You know, he's, he has cancer, he can go, you know, play baseball, run around, smile all the time. My life isn't bad, you know, I got grounded. Cody's motivation to always fight and his constant upbeat smile has led thousands of people to support him and bring childhood cancer to light. I'm hoping we get our whole community involved. I mean, those of us who know Cody, love Cody, and would do anything for him, I mean, being here, but to bring much more awareness to, to not just him, but to all the kids that have cancer. Cody's younger sister says she's been helping out her parents and believes in him. I just want to say that he's actually a really big fighter and it's good that he's fighting hard. Right now, cancer stands as the number one killer under the age of 14 and the s hope more people will continue to support when they hear Cody's story. And they're also looking forward to next year's annual event. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Hiba Samad. Thanks, Hiba. Cody's family opened up a store called Creations for a Cause, selling cancer-related gifts and apparel in order to financially support their family and to leave a legacy for Cody. To learn more about Cody's fight against childhood cancer, go to walkforchildhoodcancer.com. With a recent string of burglaries in the South Bay, all somehow linked to homes under fumigation, Torrance Police are advising residents what to look out for and how to protect your home. City Cable 3's Jacqueline Quinn has more. Local authorities are cautioning residents against a rise in fumigated home burglaries. Specific to the city of Torrance, we've had six incidences since February of this year, um, and three of those have occurred since August, which um, is an increase overall over years past. Jerry Lyles is having second thoughts about fumigating his home, but isn't sure how to protect all his valuables. Well, it's not so much of the small items. You talk about the larger items, flat screen TVs and things like that, DVD players and all that. So those are things that you're not going to take with you. So that's what they're really looking for when they break into your home. It's unclear what led to the increase, but the average number of reported incidents in the past three years had only been two. Police say they're still working on the investigation. Right now we have no indication that any of the fumigation companies um, that were tenting the homes that were victimized are involved. Meanwhile, a recent California law created in 2010 requires that some windows be left open to air out toxic fumes, leaving another opportunity for thieves to get in. During the time frame when the tent's up, uh, the criminals are going in and committing thefts, taking property. A concern that's been brought up is that criminals may be watching the fumigation workers for opportunities. We don't know that for certain, that uh, you know, criminals are actively following fumigation trucks to a job site. 
Uh, we, we here in Torrance don't have that information, but it is something to think about. Roger Class has been running a fumigation business for over 40 years, and out of the hundreds of jobs completed last year, he only had one incident, but he's warning customers to be extra careful anyway. I tell them maybe call, them, you know, call your police department in your area and ask them to go through it maybe once in a while during the night. Class also said some people have gone to great lengths to watch their home, with some even choosing to stay in their own backyard, and he thinks that theft deterrent is a good idea. A couple of jobs we have done where people had a lot of things in the house. Uh, we got them a guard to come over for certain, like eight hours, to let a tough hour, eight hour period. There's a possible chance, uh, maybe we could be somewhere where you could have the windows open so far and maybe put some kind of special locks on the windows so they can't open the windows any farther. So far, police say these incidents have been mostly occurring in the northern part of Torrance and during the week since most people are at work. However, they're still looking for the public's help, and if you have any information, they say to give them a call. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Jacqueline Quinn. Thanks, Jacqueline. In addition to taking your valuables with you, Sergeant Jenkinson says you might want to ask your fumigation company if they offer security services. Coming up, local firefighters get their hands into something sweet and worthwhile. I felt like I was having a Charlie horse, but this was different. It, it burned and the pain went from one leg to the other and I could not move. I literally sat up in bed and said, dear God, please don't let me die here. Come. Hello, I'm Dr. Richard Carmona, former United States Surgeon General, here with a serious message about a hidden killer. Did you know more than 100,000 Americans die from deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism every year. Do yourself a favor. Find out if you're at risk for DVT and what you can do right now to save your life. Had I not survived, I, I would miss my daughter's wedding, the activities with our family, all these things. I couldn't miss them and I'm really thankful that I didn't. So my uncle calls and he says he's dizzy and he's losing his balance. I'm like, Uncle, you want me to take you to a doctor? He's like, no, I'm going to look up the symptoms. I said, your symptoms are you're dizzy and you're losing your balance. So he said, I can't get on the internet because my arm is numb. I said, well, use your good arm and dial 911. Stroke's no joke. If you or someone you love is showing symptoms of stroke, don't wait because it might be too late. Dial 911. Time lost is brain lost. In celebration of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, Aveda Vicar Salon at Delamo Fashion Center in Torrance is offering a Pamper Me Day on Sunday, October 9th from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Breast cancer survivors will get pampered for free services including haircuts and color, makeup, mini facials, and much more. Contact Evelyn at 310-530-6402 or email evelynbff at gmail.com. Next, Providence Little Company of Mary Hospital is proud to present its 10th annual Women's Wellness Conference on Friday, October 7th at the Torrance Marriott. This popular day promotes the health and well-being of a woman's body, mind, and spirit. The day's event includes distinguished speakers, boutique shopping, and a gourmet lunch. This year's lunch and keynote speaker is the very funny and talented actress Vicki Lawrence. Lawrence travels nationwide speaking to women about her life and career, women's health, and being a woman in a man's world. World. In addition, there will be eight distinguished speakers leading seminars on a diverse range of topics. You won't want to miss this fantastic event. To register online, go to plcmfoundation.org or contact 310-303-5346 for more information. October is here, and if you're wondering what to do or where to take the family on Halloween, then mark your calendars for the Halloween Carnival at Wilson Park, located at 2200 Crenshaw Boulevard. Sponsored by the City of Torrance Community Services Department, the annual Halloween Carnival will take place on Monday, October 31st from 4 to 8 p.m. There will be carnival games for children of all ages and a costume parade at 6.30 p.m. For more information, call 310 618 2930 or go to recreation.torrentca.gov. And be part of the Torrent Centennial Committee's Light Up event to kick off the city's 100th birthday. 2,500 participants are expected to hold Pelican flashlights to spell out Torrent's 1912 to 2012. This takes place on Sunday, November 6th 
From 4 to 7 p.m. at Wilson Park, a Centennial photograph will be taken from the Goodyear blimp. The cost to register is just $5 per person, and you uh, get to keep the commemorative flashlight. You can sign up uh, online by going to torrentcentennial.org, or you can also register in person or by phone. Go to the Community Service Department a building of the Torrance City Hall to fill out a form or call 310-618-2720. And finally, Torrance firefighters were at a local ice cream shop to help raise much needed funds. Christy Wilcox was there and tells us more. Make a child's dream come true. <laughs> and you'll hear a contagious laugh that will echo around the world. Next, add ice cream and you may have just granted that child a wish. We're out here to help support the Make-A-Wish Foundation who granted our, my daughter Serenity a wish back in 2008. Serenity Revolinsky, whose leukemia is now in remission, wanted one wish to go to Disney. I got to meet princesses and we saw a Mickey Mouse son. And it was just a really a lot of fun. The Torrance Fire Department served a free scoop of ice cream for donations so that more children like Serenity will have a chance to fulfill their very own wish. Thank you. It's a, it's a really good feeling because, um, you know, there's all these kids in need and, um, you know, we're able to participate and help them out. We don't need a thank you. The thank you is just knowing that all the time and the money goes straight to the children. And eventually when you give away enough scoops. You know, it helped that along, you know, it helps you forget for a little bit for that time that you're on the wish and, you know, through your tough time. The gift of donation wasn't so hard for these folks. It seemed like the difficulty came in choosing from so many flavors. What flavor are you having? Pink. Pink flavor? I like pink flavor too. Jin, Ben, we've been having a lot of fun out here and the firefighters have been working really hard scooping ice cream. Now, the Make-A-Wish Foundation has been giving away wishes since 1980 for children and Cold Stone has participated for the last five years. Now, me, I haven't been doing such a good job because I've been eating all the ice cream. <laughs> hey, what can I say? You send me here, I've got to do it. I'm Christy Wilcox, back to you guys in the station. Hey, thanks Christy, I completely understand. To learn more on how you can help make a child's wish come true, go to wishla.org. And that's going to do it for us on This Week in Torrance. I'm Ben McKean. And I'm Jen Chun. If you've missed any portion of our show, you can catch us again at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.